It's early morning, me hearties. But I want to share something with you. An epic bonfire. Oh yeah. It's about 20 feet long and 6 feet deep. Gonna set this puppy ablaze for Halloween. Give you an idea of size. There's my front loader. There's my bonfire. Can't take all the credit. My husband helped me build it. And this is just a row of tractor implements. Hey, super fun. Sorry you can't be here, mates. But don't worry. I will film it for you. And we can celebrate together. Okay, so I'm going to try something different here. Uh, I've got my camera at a different angle and I'm hoping that this will work out. Oh, we are ready to tackle the volcano. I'm not exactly sure all the colors I want to use. So I kind of got all these out which you're not really seeing. I'll just tell them to you. Scab red, red gore, blood red, blazing orange, sunburst yellow, and of course we'll dab with white at the end. I'm going to start with a scab red. Scab red is a very dark color but it's also quite thin so I'm going to primarily be using that along the edges um, and then do some dry brushing up the rocks to help build that glow factor we're not going to bring the glow over the edge of these rocks just along the interiors. Um, the only place we are going to put a little bit more substantial glow will be on this in, inside rock where if you can see there's some lava dripping down here and here and I'm slightly going out of frame. Bear with me I'm uh, trying some new camera angles I'll periodically check though just to make sure. Now just start with a black base which hopefully you'll have done. I think I mentioned it in another video but my memory is bad so I can't really remember. I'm going to dab some of that scab red paint and start the dry brushing. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Now granted the light is opposite the camera so some of this is going to be in shadow for you. Let me just start over here then. Wow, Muggsy. Oh, she's something else. One thing about red, it is, red is as bright as it goes on it tends to when it dries it gets pretty dark hopefully you can see that a little bit in there
You can kind of see where I'm going with that. I'm thinking I'm not really liking this camera angle. But the rocks, being what they are, it's a little bit difficult to, unless I'm getting a complete top down angle, I can't really see what I'm doing. And of course, I didn't get out of my house to get that um, special gorilla tripod thing I want. Because this weekend was build the bonfire weekend. Which was great, except pretty much took the whole weekend. And I am incredibly sore. It hurts to move. You just can't go from zero to heavy labor instantly, apparently. Um, me and my husband were <coughs> moving all the logs and branches and pretending we were on Sasuke, which if you're not familiar with Sasuke, um, it's Ninja Warrior. America has American Ninja Warrior. But if you're not familiar with that, it's basically the most extreme obstacle course ever. And you have to build up our body strength and all that good stuff just to get through it. And it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> and I would love to be able to do half of those things Ninja Warrior people do or even parkour people do. But I can't deceive myself. I am a weakling. I think for the rest of the skull eyes on this particular island, I'm going to go with red. And on the other islands, I'll go with <clears throat> a mix between the green that you've already seen me do and the turquoise color that GW has gone with. So I have a nice uh, helping of different color skull eyes. But I think this being Volcano Island, all the eyes kind of have to be red to reflect the awesome lava-ness. <clears throat> Hopefully this will come through alright. I'm going to be dabbling the red all the way out here. I might also use some um, ball red if it decides to work with me this time. had some issues with it before with uh, my Space Hulk minis. Very disappointed in it. We'll see if it can redeem itself on this volcano. Haven't had a chance to pick up some more ball red wash to see if my wash is what's the problem. Um, which reminds me, GW has announced the release of their Mega Paint set again, which they do usually once a year, sometimes way longer. And of course, as always, everything is limited quantity, limited release, GW likes to set limits. I don't know why. I firmly believe that 
an entire paint collection should never ever 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 be a limited release ever ever I don't know why they do this and um really trying to curb my tongue here so I'm just gonna just be quiet I guess I just don't I don't know why they do what they do I think they should have I have to say this I think they should have released their mega paint set prior to or during the launch of Dreadfleet Dreadfleet is a game that appeals not just to the miniature fans of Warhammer and miniature gaming. Dreadfleet has reached out to board game players and I am on Board Game Geek and there's a lot of the geeks there. They have purchased Dreadfleet and they're not necessarily miniature gamers and they want to paint their minis and a lot of people went out to buy paint specifically for this game, specifically using Citadel paint because of the White Dwarf magazine and uh, I just can't help but question why they did not release the paint set to coincide with Dreadfleet unless of course it's all about making more money but again I do want to keep my videos more um, well, I'd say professional, except I do some pretty silly stuff on here. But, uh, I try to keep some of my views out of it. Um, I, I love GW, don't get me wrong, I love it, but I hate it at the same time. If they continue to put out one-off games, though, you know, I just, I can't help it. But like I said on Board Game Geek, I just roll over like a dog, hand them my wallet, because their miniatures are just killer looking and the mechanics aren't half bad either and Space Hulk is just an awesome awesome game and I have yet to play Dreadfleet um, I wanted to get some of the models on the board and play it this weekend but again this weekend bonfire building weekend and this coming weekend uh, which is Halloween weekend is going to be bonfire burning weekend so not gonna get a game in there I did get a game of Carcassonne in and my husband kicked my butt as he always does he's not as much of a gamer as me sadly but when he does play games with me he usually wins I don't know why. He is an engineer though, so that must play some kind of role. Alright, I'm pretty happy with what I have going on here with the reds. And I'm gonna now color in all of this with the same color red. Okay, so I'm finished with the scab red. It doesn't have to be too solid even stippling it in there is just fine and my next color I'm going to try here is red gore which might not do anything but we'll see I'm going to oh I just cut my nails so <sighs> kinda hard to get these pots open I like to have my nails pretty short I'm going to go um, at least just a little bit up the rocky wall at least a little bit but essentially just doing the same thing and let me get my other dry brush my crappier one and again get as much paint off the brush as you can for the dry brushing aspect of it I took too much off. I'm 
Mm, I'm not sure that that's really doing anything. Test it here. Yeah, it's doing a little something different. I guess I'll keep going. So anyway, the Mega Paint set selling for about $250, which is, you know, the usual. I own it. I can't say enough about how awesome it is because it comes with all of your washes, all of the metallics, all of the foundation paints. The rest of it, you can take it or leave it, really. PVA glue, it's only really good for basing like static grass and stuff like that, not gluing the models together by any means. And the brushes, well, I think you know how I feel about the brushes by now. But the paint is good. If you have the money, I would definitely pick it up because the Mega Paint set always flies off the shelves. wouldn't be surprised if it only lasts a week. Seriously. I hate, hate their limited um, release of a paint set. It just, it boggles my mind. I'm sorry. I still have to talk about it, even though I said I don't want to talk about it. They have their single paint pots available all the time. They should be able to have their full sets available all the time for the people who want to take on large projects like Dreadfleet. Or just for people who want to spend the money. I mean, seriously. But no, they'd probably rather sell individual paint pots because they make more money. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. But it's it's a good investment, so if you can grab it, please do grab it. It's great transportation and great protection for your paint also. I wish it came with empty paint pots. That make make me jump over the edge and get another set, actually. I wouldn't mind having a second set. We're running a few trades for painting services over on Board Game Geek. I'm going to end up painting one or two more of these dread fleets besides my own. I'm going to be running through a good amount of paint. I also have at least one other Space Hulk set to do for as part of a trade I have going on. I'm very happy because I think I found a simpler way to do the red armor. It should look just as good as the way I'm doing it for my own team, but save a heck of a lot more time. And no, I do not mean dipping. Not that there's truly anything wrong with dipping, as I've said before. I just I mean, dipping is really just to get models done quickly, but not very detailed. And I like my details. So personally, I'm not going to dip here. Not doing it. There we go. I think that's a pretty good helping of red gore. Well, I forgot to paint some down here.
there we go. Next color will be blood red. We're definitely going to see a change with the blood red. My, my piece of paper here looks like I had a bloody nose. going up along the edge of the rocks. I might. We'll see. But primarily I'm going to start focusing on the interior. Let's make sure I'm pointing so you can see this. The interior pockets of the lava. So I'm going to need to pick a brush. Pick the brush. Pick a brush. I want a, a dry brush but one that hasn't been so badly mangled is this one. This is really whew, done in. This one looks a little bit better. It's a very old Citadel brush and I'm not too keen on it but we'll try it. I find their um, sable brush hairs to be very almost almost like they're meant for watercolors. Watercolor brushes tend to be on the very light flaky side. That's all I can explain it as. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need a different brush. They're newer brushes, however. The newer Citadel line. Yeah, now yeah, they still feel water brushy. Or, um, not water brush. Watercolor brushy. I don't know. I, I, I don't like their brushes. I'm sorry. I'm biased. Don't like it. Don't like it. Alright. Let me try one of these brushes. Because I don't care about making this brush messy. And we're going to be stippling in here too. With a focus on of course, the center of these little pockets. You get the idea of where this is going, perhaps. Let me get you a close-up. I'm pulling you in for a close-up here. Now I went in and double-tapped some of the blood red. Well, double-tapped. I waited for the first layer to dry, and then I went back in and put a little bit more dab of blood red in, inside these little pockets. Um, and here's a close-up of where we should be now. Slightly better than my other camera angle. Also touched up on the glow and I did go ahead and put some of the blood red up on the the rocky walls just a little bit and of course on the lava flowing out. And the next step will be to add blazing orange again on the inside pockets. <laughs> Double tap. I'm in a zombie frame of mind. Especially after seeing The Walking Dead. Which gets better and better. I do love my zombies. 
Although when it comes to horror, I'm a big time werewolf fan. Werewolves over vampires, over zombies. I mean, come on. They're awesome. Alright. Blazing orange. Back inside the pockets. You notice how some of these brushes flay out? Kind of like a starburst or like, like a 4th of July firework or something? It's a pain in the butt. That means they're ready to be thrown out. But they're not even good for dry brushing anymore. And this is one of those. So, this is probably going to be this brush's last task. And this time I'm not going to uh, use two layers of this. I'm just using one. But I will make the paint towards the center a little bit thicker than the paint I'm using towards the edgings. So I'll work my way out. Our brightest bright will be in the center of the volcano after all. Really good in there. And I'm going to highlight uh, down these lava trails too. A bit of dry brushing. I have to apologize in case these videos get a little bit boring when I sit here and not talk or just sit here and paint. I do try to show everything as much as possible. As if you were sitting here next to me, at least that's my goal. Pull you in for another close up. Now you can see where we're at. In order to get um, this glow effect to work, you really do have to apply layer upon layer for the shade effects. And when you do, it just looks stunning. Our next layer is going to be sunburst yellow. And it will be done much the same as blazing orange and focusing more on the center uh, the center of the pockets and it more towards the center of the volcano itself. <clears throat> Threw my old brush away again. It makes two brushes thrown away in one day. That's not good. Oh well. Now with the blazing yellow you want to try to keep the yellow directly to the center. You know what? This brush is just not going to be good. I need something else. Something else. Something else. Let's try you. There we go. That's more of what I'm looking for. I don't know if you can even see it. Um, again, just go into the center of the pocket. And I will show you a close-up in a second here. 
once I'm done, of course. And notice this time I'm not wiping my brush off before I stipple in. I want it to be a nice potent yellow. Oh, that time I'm going to have to wipe off because I had too much paint. You kind of get the idea, huh? And the close-up. I'm really happy I've decided to go with all of these colors instead of skimping out and only doing three. And of course, adding layers gives you a better look. It takes a little bit more time, but it really pays off. So I've got a couple of things to do yet here. Uh, I'm going to take some white and take a good brush with a nice point and go in and dab just the very centers of the yellow to make it really pop. And there we are with the little bits of white. Pretty nice and glowy. I've also started getting some red on these skulls. Um, put some starting with the red gore instead of the scab red, and using my ball red around the eye sockets to enhance the glow. But they still need work. But the last stage for getting the lava done. This down here. See, can't even, can't even really see this. Um, the last stage will be to simply take the chaos black and just touch the honeycomb effect of these ridges. And I'll try to show that. Uh, I'm actually going to use a good brush for this instead of my dry brush. I want to be very exacting. I'm going to tilt my brush to the side. Hopefully you can see this. And just touch the top of these ridges with the black. A little bit slow of process here. I don't want to... Oh, I got too much. Exactly what I was trying to avoid. But you see the effect we're getting here. Sounds like the woodpecker is back back in my house. Unbelievable. Oh well. I'd rather hear that than sirens blaring, you know? Before we had land, it seems to be all we hear sirens and cops, and sirens, and cops. Very happily a landowner now. Don't have to hear that anymore. And, at night, get to look up in the sky and see stars. 
another thing you can't really do in a city or even suburb and see stars that is I mean you could look in the sky love being able to see the stars now you get the idea here and next I'll give you the close-up alright I just threw some ball red around the inner edges which you can still see um, is quite wet but just around the inner um, rim of the lava just to help it stand out a little bit once that dries and there you go our volcano And here's a bit of a distant shot. Kind of get an idea of what that looks like from afar instead of up close and in your face. And again, feel free to give me a video response or send me some photos or, you know, I want to see your work too. A lot of you have good ideas or tackle things differently and feel free to share. And I think that's all I've got time for today. And in the next video we'll get back to doing the bone colors. Hopefully a little bit later on this week, if not sooner. And we'll get these done. All right, just one last look here. I finished off the glowing eyes of the skulls, and I forget if I said what colors I used on that before, but red gore, blazing orange, a little bit of sunburst yellow, and a tap of white in the center. You can see down here more than the other ones. And around the rims of the eye sockets, just a little bit of ball red wash. And here it is again with the lights off. Or at least my painting light. It looks even more menacing. <laughs> and there you have it. All the glow effects on the volcano are complete. All we need now is a sacrificial staircase of doom. Doom! Until next time, me hearties!